My name is Devin Chasanoff. I'm a developer advocate covering the Google Ads API. So let's talk a little bit about segmenting in the uh, Google Ads query language. So the first thing to keep in mind is that there is some sort of implicit segmentation going on. Uh, every report is segmented by the resource in the from clause. And by that, I mean uh, by the resource, I mean by the specific uh, ID of that resource, or in our, our case, uh, the unique identifier in the AdWords API is the resource name. Uh, so it will be uh, segmented by that resource name. Um, otherwise, if we selected campaign.name, status, and impressions without filtering, we, well, we would get one row that wouldn't be very useful. Instead, we get one row for every campaign that's in our account. And as you can see here, uh, we have the resource name, which is returned by default. Uh, you don't actually have to request that in your select clause. Um, you get the campaign.name, status, and our metrics as rows. Pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about uh, what happens when you put segments into your select clause. So now uh, we've inserted segments.device into our select clause. And what happens here, a segmented query returns a row for every combination of the main resource being queried, so the resource name, as well as the segment values. So let's assume there are only two campaigns in our account, uh, one with the ID one through uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and one counting from nine through zero backwards, right? So we have those two campaigns. They're the same color coding as we had on the previous slide. However, you'll see that each one is further segmented by the devices which people use to view your ads. And for the sake of simplicity, we're assuming that people only looked at your, at your ads on either mobile or desktop. So instead of getting two rows, we now get four rows. And just to kind of illustrate this a little bit further, uh, this is the first. Uh, this is the first campaign, uh, counting from one through nine zero, um, where we have um, just one row that's returned because we only have one campaign on our account, and you can see all the, the different columns there. But when we add segments.device, we get this additional column segments.device, and this also breaks out. Uh, that first row into two separate rows here, uh, one for each um, segment, uh, one for each device that people use to view your ads. And here's the kind of side-by-side -side view of those, or top and bottom. All right, so next let's talk about segmenting re uh, resources. So uh, you've seen a few different types of segments, things like date, device. Uh, certain resources also allow you to segment on other resources. And in order to find out if a resource has segmenting resources, you can look at the documentation. And these are typically available in reporting views. Um, and I haven't really spoken about reporting views yet. Uh, so this is probably a good opportunity to do so. A reporting view uh, is really just a resource uh, that aggregates common uh, fields, segments, and metrics for, for uh, common reporting purposes. Uh, because there's no click resource, we have this click view resource in order to generate a report about clicks. Um, so with that, the click view, as you can see there, has two segmenting resources, ad group and campaign. So if we were to place those into our select clause, our result set would be, uh, would be segmented by whichever one of those segmenting resources we placed in our select clause. And as you can see at the bottom of the illustration, of the, the bottom red square, uh, in addition to having those segmenting resources, ClickView also has kind of ordinary segments that you can uh, group by. Now, these aren't just available on views. Uh, for example, if you look at campaign budget, uh, you can segment based on the campaign resource.